I'm walking down Madison, walking down Madison. No, I'm not. I'm walking down London Road. You can see it's written on the building over there. And there's a reason I'm walking down London Road. I'm actually walking to BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Um, and it's, I'm just by it now. It's very windy. If there's a, if there's a lot of wind on the mic, I'll have to apologise for that. Um, so there we have. BBC Radio Gloucestershire. Look at it, up there on the sign. Now I'm heading in there. Do you know what? I've never ever been in the front door because I always go in round the tradesman's exit entrance, right round the back to the car park, and then there's a rubbish um, entrance in the back. So um, basically, I go, I go round into the little steel door at the back, and they buzz me in. So. Uh, well, if you followed what I've done in my life, I've had a bit of quite a bit of time with local radio. Um, starting out, do you know my my earliest memory of, of local radio was going to BBC Radio Gloucestershire with the young farmers when I think we were raising money for children in need, and we did some sort of mad dash pub crawl thing, and uh, we ended up live on air at like I don't know ten o'clock at night or something like that. Um, so that, so, so that was probably 30 years ago, I should think. Uh, since then, I, I've been involved with uh, Radio Bristol. I did quite a lot there with a chap called Ben Prater, who now presents the uh, breakfast show on Radio Wiltshire. Uh, I used to have a, a, a slot on his show there called Get Off My Land, which, which was really funny and, and uh, involved us doing a, a few things on our farm, but also uh, doing kind of... I used to like going out to, to see people, interview them and stuff. Um, but I've also done quite a bit of Radio Gloucestershire up here with it first of all with a chap called Vernon Harwood uh, and he he's, he did similar to Kate does and goes around the county he was quite interested in country life and what was going on and Kate Clark has been working on it for BBC Radio Gloucestershire doing her Sunday afternoon or stroke morning programme for about eight years and I've done quite a few things with her so I'm here again to get today to go in the studio, have a chat. But it's, it's tinged with a bit of sadness, really. And um, I can say it is a bit sad because the BBC have decided to sort of cut back on local radio throughout the country. Um, and what they've done, they've cut back the amount of presenters they've got and they're cutting the shows. So I think a lot of the shows are disappearing. And what they're doing is they're having more of a regional feel to it rather than really local. Um, so some of the shows will be broadcast from Gloucestershire and the rest, I'm talking about this station particularly, some of the rest will be from a, a show uh, recorded to cover Wiltshire, Gloucestershire, you know, Somerset, maybe further afield, I'm not really sure. And they're making a lot of their presenters redundant and Kate's one of those people who's leaving because of this and it's really quite sad. I think that the BBC are making a big mistake, they're dismantling something that is quite important because it gives people like myself and a lot of other people in, in the region this is road here isn't it it gives them a voice it gives them a chance to discuss local issues that you won't get on national news um, <clears throat> because radio local radio is very much about going out and meeting the people um, in that area I mean I've been very lucky I've done quite a lot with Kate but listening on the way up, she was talking to other people. Uh, I think she was talking about a community orchard and things like that in the area. And there isn't really the opportunity to get on anything else. I mean, I do my local YouTube channel about my farm, okay? And someone else can go and set up a YouTube channel and do it about theirs. But it's very difficult to find something that covers such a wide spectrum. And local radio really does that. So a bit of a tragedy, I think, um, that this is happening um, I'm gonna go on in there, there in a minute but what I might do a little bit of video in the studio but what I'm really gonna do is I'll record the broadcast and then what I'll do is I'll just put it on here with a couple of pictures because it's quite hard it's distracting if I try and go and do a video in there it kind of distracts from the moment but the one the one thing I will say about Radio uh, Gloucestershire and the work I've done with Radio Bristol as well and stuff 
is it's given me the confidence to go out and chat to people and interview people because I I've experienced what it's like to be interviewed and I've kind of seen how it's worked and if you've watched what I've done with um, when I go away on holiday and things I really like going out and uh, meeting people and chatting to them and, and trying to do my best to get a story out of them okay so I'm not as good and not professionally trained like the people in local radio but I can honestly say that that enthusiasm for doing that has come from my experience with this and seeing how it works and I have to be very thankful for local radio for helping me with uh, doing this, talking to you. Because if you're on radio, you're talking to no one. It's a, it's a conversation with a mic in a room. Um, so, so yeah, that's my take on local radio and we're gonna go and head in there now. <laughs> There's nothing glamorous about radio and I'm sure Kate will agree with me on that. It's, you go into a very small studio, it's maybe you or one other person, it's, it's no entourage and you make your own coffee. Anyway, we'll head on in and we'll crack on with Radio Brist Gloucestershire for maybe my last time. Because once, once this changes with Kate leaving, the chance of me getting the opportunity to come and talk to people in my area has definitely reduced. Which is a real shame. Well, you might think that's a good idea. <laughs> crack on. I told you it wasn't very glamorous, so I'm round the back. Look. It's a car park, but I like it because what you get to see is that on each place there's the uh, where's the people can park. That's drive. That's the that's the evening presenter, and we've got that all the names. I'm going to look here because I don't know when I'm going to get a chance to come here again. Late bulletins, late producer. He's got to get there on time. Don't be late. Late BA. Not what's BA. I don't know what that one is. Day breakfast. Day breakfast. Day breakfast reporter. Day breakfast reporter. Early BA. The early producer. Early producer. Breakfast presenter. I don't think there's a breakfast presenter. They've gone home. Bre breakfast presenter. So we're in the car park. It's all labelled up. You've got your own space. Travel presenter. Station vehicle. Station vehicle. These are the station vehicles. Look, they're the BBC cars. They'll probably come out and tell me off in a minute because uh, <laughs> they don't really. The, Kate knows I'm here, but the other people won't know who I am probably. Uh, station vehicle, vis BBC visitor, BBC visitor. Oh, I've, I've I've parked in the drive time uh, uh, presenter's uh, parking space, but um, I don't think that matters because drive time isn't until later. I got some flowers for Kate as well because I thought just to say thank you. Um, it's not just for thank you from me really is it because i get a chance to see her but uh, there's plenty of people that want to probably thank her that aren't ever going to meet her because they listen to her on the radio and uh actually love what she does but never get to meet her whereas i do so this isn't just for me it's just from everyone else right i'm going to turn this off now we're going to head in all right cheers you see radio class to show kate's in there She's right through the window. Can't really see because of the reflection. She's there. Oh, come out. So she's in there. I'm going to turn it. I'm going to turn this off a bit. She'll be out when she's got a lot to do. There's music playing, which isn't very good for me. So I'm going to turn it off. Right. I'm in the studio with Kate. She's very generously invited me in. Lovely Kate. She's she's here for your last day and. Hello. We're going to have a little chat, aren't we? We're going to have some fun. We well. are. We always do. I'm You're... looking down there. Sorry, because I've got to put, press a button in about five seconds. Have time. I? Right. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to turn this off now, but we're going to get on with the job. All right, crack on. Jingle. But temptations for you as well. And loads of good stuff between now and the end of the show at two o'clock. Well, I don't know what's going to happen in the next few minutes, but I tell you what, I'm, with trepidation, I'm just going to open the microphone and see what happens, because <laughs> welcome to the programme, the Funky Farmer, okay. otherwise known as Richard Cornock. Hello. Hello. What a lovely thing to be back on your final show. We were sadness to... and gladness. Sadness and gladness. Yeah, you're, back, you're here on the final show and um, you're a special 
special guest. Thank we you. were trying to figure out when the last time was when you were here. I can't remember. I mean, that COVID sort of knocked a lot of things on its head and it all went a bit weird, didn't it? But it did. do you know what, Kate? Every time I see you, I always know I'm going to have a laugh. <laughs> That's true. Same with you. True. Same with you. You make me smile. You've always got something up your sleeve normally. I don't know whether you're <laughs> growing a beard and shaving it off or dyeing your hair red or what else have you done? You've done loads of wacky stuff. Well, I don't know, but do you know what? I just listened on, on the way up about the giant vegetable thing and it's given me an idea. Oh my, of course it does. Okay, so <laughs> what I could do is actually yeah. get some of the people who watch my YouTube channel to yeah. grow giant vegetables yeah. as a little round the world or round England thing. Because everyone loves the giant. Are you actually so right? The giant vegetable thing is what everyone loves. It's all a bit tongue in cheek, right? Yes. And they, they, they're going to taste rank. I mean, nobody's going to eat a giant veg. But there's something quite alluring about them. So, what I, because I follow quite a few um, like um, vegetable growers on social media, and there's this one lovely old bloke. He's not in Gloucestershire, otherwise, I'd try and get him on the radio. And he's got one of your barrels that you no doubt have on the farm. You know, one of those blue plastic barrels oh, yes, or wheel barrels, right yeah. um um that must have had oh, some sort oh, of oh, feed oh, in barrel, yeah i know exactly what you mean blue sort of chemical barrels we use yeah teeth dip or something yeah well he has a load of compost yeah. in that and so he can grow really long parsnips oh, wow that's a genius idea because if you're growing them in the ground they'll hit a stone yeah. they'll go kinked yeah. but if you're growing them in, the, in a huge barrel because they must be about four feet tall are they yeah. or something then you can get a really long straight root veg wow you're giving his trade secret away there but that is a really <laughs> good idea isn't it yeah oh, you're giving me ideas i think you are you gonna try and grow some giant veggies i think well, the, i think a pumpkin because everyone likes a pumpkin and also you can use it at the end for halloween yeah. Whereas everything else, like you said, if you grow something too big, you're like, what am I going to do with that? Well, Adam Frost was telling us that his mate grew a huge pumpkin mm. and in the end um, carved it out, put it on a lake and <laughs> got in it like a little boat. No. That's a brilliant <laughs> idea. This, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, I can how see. small is this person? His over? eyes are twinkling now. He's getting ideas. I think <laughs> I need a big pumpkin. <laughs> These Bear pumpkins big. are as big as people's sofas, oh, some of them. Wow. Well, I've got plenty of manure, haven't I? That's You've a, got plenty you know, of manure! I'm not going to go short, am I? I think I could probably do it. Let's introduce you properly. I've said you're a dairy farmer. You're in Watton Under Edge. Um, tell us a bit more about your farm. So I am the cliché small family farm. I, I, I run the farm with my brother, Tom. I mean, uh, we've got, we milk about 75 British Friesian dairy cows, the black and whites. But, um, and so I do that as my full-time job. It is full-on dairy farming. Uh, but also, I, on the side of that, I've been doing, must be 10 years now at least, um, I've been doing videos for YouTube as The Funky Farmer about my life on the farm. And uh, it's given me a lot of opportunities to do things I wouldn't have done before. And we've just come back from Ireland, myself and another YouTubing farmer from Gloucestershire called uh, Farmer P. Um, we've just been to the National Plowing Championships over there and done a, a little look. I've done some videos, I've been to a machinery manufacturers over there. And we've done a, a meet and greet and things like that. It's been, it's very interesting, you know, I, and a bit of diversification does a bit of, bring a bit of extra money in for the farm as well. Yeah, so you've got 107, 100, no, 157,000 subscribers now to your YouTube channel. That's quite, quite a few, yeah. People that's just, a lot. People have latched on to it. I, I think, do you know what, they like the reality of it? It's not staged or fake. Um, it is things go wrong they go wrong and they and i and also have like to have a bit of a laugh at them as well so yeah. it's not straight farming it's a no. bit of fun you there's know? always a bit of fun always yeah. a bit of fun right let's play a tune and uh, come back yeah. bbc radio gloucestershire quarter past 12 richard cornock a dairy farmer from what and under edge otherwise known as the funky farmer joins me on the show he is a dairy farmer you know day-to-day -day life must go on but he also has a youtube channel uh, where he just records day-to-day Life on the farm, don't you? And like you're saying, it's, With the family and it's warts and all, isn't it? It is. And um, do you know what? I mean, because my kids are growing up on the farm, I'm, I'm involving them with different things. We've just got two pigs at the moment. No way. Yes. I'm, I didn't tell you that, did I? No, because I haven't yet talked to you about your bees. Last time oh, yes. you said, oh, I've got bees. Oh, and yes. I was like, oh, well, let's talk about that. And now you're saying you've got pigs. I like to, I just like to keep busy. I got, you know, I'm yeah. sure so, so we've got two pigs that are called Boris and Patrick. Right. My son named the, kid, the pigs. I don't know where Boris came from. It's nothing to do with politics. Okay. Uh, Boris and Patrick. Boris and Patrick are soon going to be going to the butchers because we're rearing them for ourselves. And it was 
it's a good thing for the, I think for children to be aware of where the meat comes. They can make their choices of whether they want to eat meat or not, but they've experienced you know rearing the animals we're going to eat, and that was what it was about. But um, I can tell you this now, right? Piglet style is lovely, cute things. Yes. By the time they're ready to go to the butchers, they want to bite your legs, and they're yes. not so cute. They are huge, aren't they? they are. And um, and you imagine touching a pig. You, I always imagined it would be like skin, like soft mm. and nice. No, no, it's really hairy. Isn't Very it? bristly, isn't it? I'm not sure. I think they used to make shaving brushes or something out of. Them. Did they? Because you imagine that if you were. Whipping up some shaving foam on, on there. You, this is going back, <laughs> I'm not, to, a shaving I'm not sure, but I've got to look that one up. I've got to look that one up. No, but I would say, um, you know when you get a pork scratching and it's yeah. got hair sticking out of it? Oh, I don't mind that. No! Um, oh, I love a pork scratch. <laughs> not with the hairs and all, though. That would definitely... I couldn't, I couldn't mm. do that. Um, so, are you not going to get a female pig? And have, well, and have piglets. Yeah. Oh, do you know what? Harry, my youngest son, would love that. That could be his little thing. Well, he wants to get some more next year. I, I think Harry's got the ambition, but the trouble is I get lumbered with all the extra work. True. You know, yeah. and they start out very small and they end up suddenly they're eating everything that... Costs you a lot of money to rear a pig. I can tell you that. Well, now. you've got um, uh, you've got some orchard trees, haven't you? Yeah. You've got some fruit trees. Do well, they I've go been forage? Them. So I've kept them in, inside a, a shed because the, the problem with pigs is that if you let them out, they'll absolutely destroy the ground. In fact, you probably know about that from the forest of Dean yeah, wild boar. From the boar. I've been. I've, my wife's from Lydney. I've been round uh, parts of Lydney or further up, and I went into this housing estate. We're going to see her friend, and the verges and all the like. You know, the yeah. grass verges on the side of the road. Absolutely annihilated. Yeah, it's just all turned over. Mm. The snout, it just goes through it like butter, yeah. doesn't it? So, because I've got a dairy farm, I can't really risk them going out and oh. destroying all the pasture. Oh, all your pasture would be gone, wouldn't but it? But they are having the apples off the orchard at the moment, you know. Loving that, I But bet. then they're nicking that from the cider I'm going to make. So. <laughs> so, tell me about your bees. Bees. My friend John has got the bees. I've, I've got the perfect thing here. So, my friend John... Uh, wanted to make have some beehives, and he came to me and said, would you have some on the farm? And I said, absolutely fine. So he keeps them, and I get the benefit of seeing what he does without having to worry about it, because they're, it's a bit fickle. If it's wet, they won't fly. You know, too cold, they won't fly. And they and then what they'll do is they'll stay in the hive and eat the honey, because he had that one year. Right. We went to get the honey that he thought he had, and they'd eaten it up. Right. Well, I suppose this is why they're fed, aren't they? Beekeepers mm. feed them in the, right. in the colder months yeah. so that uh, you can share out the delights of their honey. Yeah. So I do get a share of the honey, and it is very nice. But yeah. I'm very glad that that's one aspect I haven't got to look after. So you don't have to worry about yeah. getting all the kit on. And... I know. And, and they do sting. They Believe me, went, do they? even with all that kit on, somehow, sometimes they manage to find in a oh, way in a cuff or something. So every now and again, I've got I've gone out recording a story about yeah. bees, and I've put the whole kit on, and I've been obviously with the professional person, and he's always gone, or she, uh, you know, tuck it in. Is it tuck it into your wellies or out of your wellies? I don't know. But you've got to make sure that you, like you say. The yeah. wrist areas, the joint areas are all well covered because if one gets in, I can't imagine Ooh, the, you know. the sort of dance I would do. Can you imagine <laughs> that? It would be, yeah. Um, so you don't have to worry about that, but you get to reap the benefits, well, the rewards. Best way, yeah. Absolutely. Well done. Um, let's get another tune on and right. then we'll be back with Richard. So it's fast approaching half past 12. The Funky Farmer joins me in the studio. It is Richard Cornock. And I can't believe what you've just told me, that next year, in 2024, you'll have been farming for 40 years. I know. How I does that feel? It. So in 1984... I know. Tell me what. Tell me well, about Richard in 1984. Well, I was very spotty. <laughs> <laughs> I left school at 16, and um, at the time there was a government training scheme called YTF, Youth Training Scheme, and it gave a little bit of money to an employee, and you went off to college as well part time. And I, my dad, employed me on the YTF scheme on our farm when I was 16, and then after that I went on to Hartbury College and did a diploma in agriculture, did a bit of travelling, came back to the farm. So. My life in, has been soaked up in farming for 40 years. I, I only kind of dawned on me the other day. I thought, blimey, I left school. 40, yes. Oh, I've been farming for 40 years. Yeah. How could that be? Wow. So I've, I've decided that for 40 years of farming, I'm going to give away 40 trees. But And, and the reason for that is that, and, and all your listeners are probably well aware of this, we're, we're hit with a terrible time at the moment with ash dieback around the county and around the country, and also in Ireland where I went to, to this week. Uh, the ash trees are dying everywhere. So I kind of thought, well, what can I do? I, I can't replace everything, but I can put a couple back, a few back, so a few trees back. So what I've decided to do is give 40 trees away 
Um, and because I've got this kind of network with people through YouTube who know me, um, there's a network of YouTubing farmers. So I'm going to give a few out to YouTubing farmers. I've, I've got some friends and family who've got farms around the country. So I'm going to give a few out to them. And then I'm going to throw a few out to people that follow me on YouTube and say, if you send me an email, I think you'll have to go in a hat and I'll have to pull them out. But the idea is I think I'd kind of spread this around the country a little bit. Um, so uh, I'm gonna either, it's either going to be an oak tree or an apple tree, a nice, and that'll be a standard size apple tree, the big ones that grow in traditional orchards. And I just thought, you know, I've done 40 years. I've been very lucky to make my living out of farming. Um, I'm very fortunate. I'm doing the YouTube and that can bring some revenue in. You know, time to put something back, really. Oh, that is lovely. You know, so... That is great. So if people do want, you know, to follow you, if you go to YouTube and just search for The Funky Farmer, you'll, uh, your videos will come up there. You've been doing it, like you say, for 10 years. You've got 2,000 videos here, I it don't... says. See, yes. I don't... It's really funny. I think it's... <laughs> I don't follow what I do. And uh, we were talking... It's very interesting, actually. We and Kate were talking off air about... We're very similar in what we do in the fact that Kate's on the radio talking to nobody, in effect, in this little room we're in today. Yeah. And I'm the same with my videos, and I talk to a video camera, no audience. I'm in a very sort of lonely, we're both in kind of lonely, we're not lonely people, but we're in lonely jobs, aren't we? Yeah, you're can you're be. on your own, you know, I know yeah. that when I come to Radio Gloucester, there's not... 20 or 30 people here. No, we don't have a big no. team. In fact, walking around the the, the show yesterday, Malvern um, show, um, I, I bumped into a couple of friends mm. and they were like, where's the team? I like, know, there isn't one, isn't And there? I'm like, I am here on my own. And they're like, well, where's your kit? And I'm like, it's here in my bag. You know, technology is small these days. Um, well, and we don't realise the reach we've got, though, do we, until people come up to you and stuff and tell you. And yeah. uh, we were saying off air again about Kate with... Off air, you've had some lovely messages, haven't you, that people come to you. I'm watching it tearing up a little bit here, actually. I mean, I, You're Kate, supposed Kate, to be uplifting us, I, not, not making Just me one, cry. one little message about, I'm very sad that the BBC are uh, getting rid of a lot of their really good presenters because I, I think uh, the network of local radio is a fantastic asset to the country and gives the little people like me and around this county a voice. And I have to say... I think it's wrong what they're doing, but Kate, don't you fear you're loved. You are loved. Thank you very much. I know I do need to say that also I um, I am going to stay here as a producer. Brilliant. So I'm here behind the scenes, and so I will obviously do my best to bring you all these lovely stories that um, I've been trying to bring you over the years, and my colleagues as well, of course. We will keep doing that and keep working hard. But, yeah, your point was is that um, it, it, farming can be a lonely business, and mm. you've got, you've got uh, this videos that you make, and then you were in Ireland a couple of yeah. days ago, and you just said loads of, even a policeman recognised you. I know. I've still got my passport in my pocket, actually, because I only got off the plane at about one o'clock this morning. Oh, no. But, um, so I had a line. Um, yeah, so, hang on a minute. He only had a lie-in because he's used to getting up at half well, three. Well, that is true, actually. I, you know, <laughs> I found I, I can't lie in bed anymore like I used to be. I imagine it's like Radio British Gloucester. If you're doing a breakfast show, you're tuned to getting up early after a while. I could sleep anywhere, mate, to be honest. <laughs> I can sleep standing up. But, yeah, um, but yeah so um, you've you obviously had lots of messages from people reaching out to you saying yeah. how much it helps them. And, and it's, in, it's incredible. Um, so we're in Ireland, we went to the National Ploughing Championships, which I had no idea is, is so big over there. They call it, they just call it the ploughing. And if, you know, it's like if I said to you, Kate, I'm going to ploughing, you would, what are you on about? It's, it's a ploughing match down the road or some farmer that's doing it. Over in Ireland, if you say I'm going to the ploughing, everyone knows what you're on about. It's a huge competition. So I went over there with a friend of mine called Farmer P. We went over there to do it. I did some videos which haven't been up on YouTube yet. But we did a, a meet and greet. Okay, first time I've ever done this. Absolutely first time. I, we, we just said, well, we're going to be at the ploughing. If anyone wants to come and say hello, you can. And we're on the Abbey Machinery Stand. So we stood there, 10 o'clock, uh, you know, or 11 o'clock, I think it was. And I kind of thought, well, and this is where it relates to you. You, you don't realise what reach you've got. You, you think there's only one person listening down the road. But we found that there was a queue, as a few hundred people turned up, all wanted to come and say hello and just chat to us and say they like what we're doing. And, and that's where I relate to what you do, because you sit in this room, you talk to people, you're always, you know, you're an asset, you are really, because you're happy and lovely and... Um, I'm going to have to close this microphone. <laughs> but you, you've got a reach that you don't realise, do you? you? 
you know, and, yeah. and that's what radio is. It's a friend to people. Yeah. And it's, um, I think what, you know, radio is almost better than TV and my YouTube and everything because you can have radio on while you're working and carrying on. You don't have to sit down and watch, do you? No, you don't. that's it. You can carry on. Mm. I mean, I, I listen to podcasts on the radio all the time. And I put my earbuds in and I'm cleaning at home and I'm doing stuff. And then it, you just take that person with you into whatever room. And uh, and then when they actually meet you, people go, oh, you're not like what I thought <laughs> I was. I once went down to the Dean Heritage Centre, and it was years ago now, and, um, and I had my son who was only about uh, 15 months. And the person who was going to look after my child for me um, pulled out at last minute. So I was like, I've got this interview. I've got to go down there. So I'm just walking up to the Dean Heritage Centre with him in a pushchair. And I walked through the door and went, hello, I'm Kate from Radio Gloucestershire. And the guy behind the counter went, oh, that spoilt the illusion. Oh, you joking. <laughs> but that's what it is, isn't it? It's I, I was just do, do people recognise you from no. your voice? No, 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 no. no I've, I've had it once when I was doing stuff at Radio Bristol. I went into Bristol and some chap went, I, know, I think it's because I do sound a bit Gloucestershire words or so when I went into Bristol I think they probably <laughs> thought I recognise him, you know. <laughs> Let's break for some tunes. Service! On BBC iPlayer. Have you seen my sugar? Yeah, it's all here, girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> definitely not sweet no. Hello, on the way very soon. 25 minutes away from one o'clock. Hello, it's Kate with you here on BBC Radio Gloucestershire. And I'm joined today by the Funky Farmer, otherwise known as Richard Cornock. I think that should be the other way around, shouldn't it? I Your don't real know. name for. <laughs> what do you prefer to be called? I don't, I don't mind anything clean. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you have a dairy farm, you're in Wet and Under Edge. You have a small farm don't yeah. you how how many how many it's, ladies have you got oh look, about 70 i think we're milking about 72 at the moment yeah it's about 120 acres and I, you know, it's more than this day and age it's getting into those mm. months now as well where it oh. all starts to get cold because we've had we've had i know we haven't had a great summer but we've had at least some warmth and i'm a little tiny bit it's been a struggle for farmers has though. It? yeah because of the lack of sun and stuff you know, and haymaking. Hay exactly. You know what I'm going to say now. Tell what me was, about haymaking. Well, I, I made hay. Normally I make hay June, July. I ended up making it at the end of August. Uh, and it was a real battle because you get the dew starts coming up by this or that time. So the hay isn't very dry early in the morning. And you're battling to try and get it. There was just no sun, was there? I mean, no. You know. I've got a farmer friend who um, has just a few sheep in the Forest of Dean, and she said her biggest problem was that she didn't want to make. She hasn't got the equipment to make silage, mm. so she just always makes hay. Yeah. But do you can you? I do make silage? silage, yeah. And we did actually turn one of our hay cuts into uh, silage. That's what we had to do. Um, and and actually, from a grass point of view, it kept on growing because there was so much rain. Yeah. You know, and I've got plenty of grass in the field for the cows at the moment. But uh, as far as making hay, I always make some because we've got small sheds. And do you know what? I really like hay. <laughs> I really like making hay making. I, I, from my youth, I've loved it. The smell. Of, I don't know whether you know or any of your listeners probably can think about the smell of hay. Yeah. Fresh hay is just like, oh, it it's is. a special smell. I do, I do know what you mean. I used to, you know, as a kid, you know, play about with horses a bit. So, mm. uh, oh, there you go. I mean, the horrible, dusty stuff is nasty, but mm. the, the fresh, lovely hay, uh, it's great, isn't it? So what have you had to do this year Well, we, we did make some, we've, we, but not enough, really. But I, I've, I've got some left over from last year because we had a really bad la uh, year last year with the drought. It's hard to remember, but we actually spent £8,000 buying in forage last uh, July, August to feed our cows because there was nothing growing in the oh, fields. Wow. So I've got a little bit of hay left over from that. So we might just, we'll wing it. We'll wing it, Kate. We'll this right. is what I really admire about people in the farming community because I think I'm, I like to plan and I like to be in control of my planning. And you guys, you just have to go, well, we just have to go with the flow. Well, I mean, I think it always... On a farming mind, you're always in the back of your mind. You're always thinking, if it's going well, don't think this is going to keep going. <laughs> you know, you plan for disaster and farm for the good times. But um, and mm. I've, you know, in the forty odd years or nearly forty years I've been farming, I've seen so many ups and downs in uh, well, dairy industry particularly goes up and down with the milk price. Mm. But every industry, every part of the industry does. So what you've got to do is be resilient and and be prepared for difficult times. It's a funny thing, but it's. It's a ride I enjoy. Not when it's down bad, but no. the thing is, I, I love the job. I really do. So do you think that you have to have a bit of a pessimistic outlook or do you have to always... Yeah, I think yeah. a bit, but you've got to have both. 
you got to be pessimistic about the price of things and everything because you've got to keep a bit reserved back. I would never run on a lot of borrowings on our farm. Some people do, but I'm always conscious that, you know, you've got to make those payments and you've got to keep going. But, you know, sometimes you do have to borrow money to buy machinery and stuff, but you've got to be pretty confident. Mm. And and what's what's happening on the farm at the moment? How's life? Well, I, uh, you, I'm sure you've probably touched on this before in your programme or on Radio Gloucestershire, but we've had a real problem with hair coursing. Um, which is people coming in at night with trucks. They actually drive into the farm um, and they're after the hares. So they go with dogs and they chase the hares down. And uh, I've had a real problem with that in the last couple of weeks. Um, the first, t- first time I realised they'd come was when I got a phone call at quarter past seven in the morning to say your cows are out on the road. Uh, and I had 30 heifers out on the main road at quarter past seven in the morning mm. and i'd already blocked the gates uh, gates because i was where these people might come but what they did they pushed the bales out of the way with their trucks and then they went out around the whole farm and then at some point in the evening they drove back out left the gate open and when it became light the heifers found the gate and thought oh what's through there let's go and have a little look but um so they were out on the main road and um so i thought i'd sorted the problem and i'd blocked off where they'd been and then uh, a couple of days later, what had happened is I went to get the cows in for milking at quarter to six in the morning. And I thought, it's a bit odd, there's no, not many cows around. And uh, and then a goat went where they should be, and the gate was wide open on the main road. And I thought, oh, they're all out on the road, but they weren't. Luckily, they weren't. What happened is these people had driven in, gone through the electric fence, which controls the, how much grass the cows will eat, and rallied around the farm. And the cows have thought, ooh, whippy, we've got more food, so we'll drive, go on to the um, fresh pasture that they would have the next day. So that, that was really lucky. That's where they were. But they, but the people who came with their truck actually rammed the gate, and it was a brand-new wooden gate, a lovely traditional field gate I'd put in probably in about a month earlier, and they actually smashed it all up. And, drove, did, you know. and what did the police say? Well, the police, police came out, but I... Th- yeah, it's really difficult for the police. I'm not going to blame the police because they can't caption, them, but it's really difficult for the police because where 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 will these people be? You know, one night they're on my farm, the next night they're on someone else's farm. And it's, you know, I don't know what time they came, probably two o'clock in the morning or something. Unless you're there at the time and know they're there, how are you going to catch them? It's very difficult. They have got, I think they've got a rural crime officers with drones and things. but um, And some people have been caught. That is very difficult. What is the mentality then of these criminals? You say they're after the hares. Mm. Is it purely for sport? Or I think it... so, yes. Yes. I mean, I can't believe it's an easy way to get something to eat, you know. I mean, it's not easy well, to no. get Tesco's, isn't it, by a chicken? It's, I was going to say, are they, are they, what are they doing with the well, hares? Well, police told me, I, uh, I, I have no way of being sure of this, but police told me quite often they actually gamble on the dogs, so they'll have three dogs in, in the field, and it's which one gets the hare. So it's a, it's a sport, a gambling sport for them. Um, and it's their... I don't understand how they do it, but this, it's the season for hair coursing now. So, oh, right, OK. Um, so what they're after is large fields, pasture mm, land, whatever it might be, where they can see the yeah. hair and the dogs can sniff and the hair. Because a rabbit will always and, go down a burrow, you see. Right. So it's no good chasing a rabbit. Yeah. But the thing with the hair, it doesn't have a burrow. It lives above ground. Doesn't Never it? knew that. There's nowhere to go. Right. So it'll just run around, and, and they're, they're very fast. And obviously for a dog, that's yeah. something to chase. And they obviously just don't care about whose land they're trespassing on. And they're beautiful animals. A hare oh, is a gorgeous. lovely thing. Yeah. I've seen hares. Oh, I'm getting well done now. Yeah, yeah, you they're do. gorgeous. I, I've seen hares boxing in a field, and I've seen five hares boxing in a field, and that is a wonderful sight. So when they come and get that, that mm. makes me very sad. Mm. Mm. Ed Warwick and Heartbreaker. Music on the way from Go West and Blue before one o'clock this afternoon. And uh, joining us in the studio for, for the next 10 minutes or so, it is Richard Cornock, a dairy farmer from Wesson, otherwise known as the Funky Farmer Online. If you go to YouTube, you'll find his videos. And uh, he has got 157,000 followers. And what's nice is that you just you capture farming life as it is, no airs and graces. As it comes, <laughs> as you know, with say. a bit of fun. I just like to do some silly stuff. Like I did one video where we, we squashed things with a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was so offended. I went into a well-known supermarket in about September and found they had the Christmas range out. In September? Yeah. And so I bought a chocolate Santa Claus and we, and me and the boys, my, my two young lads, we, we decided to squash those things. So we did, uh, we squashed a, a large root vegetable. Did you? And we also squashed a Father Christmas. But what with? 
tractor. You just tractor straight you just over, it. over it. I don't know, it's just funny. Yeah, my lads love stuff like that. I know they do. My this kids is, thought it's hilarious. Is, is this a boy thing or what? Because what my kid will do is he will... Um, He'll put something under the back wheel one, That's what we and did. he'll stand outside chuckling as yeah. I'm reversing out, <laughs> sniggering, and I'm like, okay, well, what's behind the back wheel? And I'll, he'll have put a bottle of something. You've just got to be hopeful it's not your mobile phone. Now. <laughs> <laughs> it's really nice that you, you have your family on your videos, um, your two boys. Give them a shout out. Who are they? Oh, yeah, Jack and Harry. They're, they're off. Uh, I think they've got football on this morning. Yeah. And how old are they now? Uh, so Harry's 12, but he's, he's uh, Harry's 12, but he thinks he's about 25. Yeah, of course he does. And. Uh, Jack's uh, 15. Wow. And, uh, Gosh. Yeah, I know, growing up quick. I mean, this is why I make the most of my time with them on the farm, because I'm also conscious that I don't really mind what they do in their life, but I think a fantastic place for a kid to grow up. Yeah. So I'm kind of trying to immerse them in the experience of growing up on a farm. I'm sure some of your listeners will agree. I, mean, I bet you've got plenty of listeners that might not be anything to do with farming now, but might not have had an experience on a farm when they were younger. Mm. And it'll never leave you. You'll always remember the. I remember, you know, pick my mum used to have a lot of chickens that were free range around the farm, and the chickens used to go off into the hay barn and and hide in the summer. And we used to have cockerels, and the first thing we'd know is we hear this cheeping, yeah. and it was the and these chickens had sat on these eggs in the hay barn for three weeks and hatched them out in the hay barn. We'd find these chicks running around the hay barn. It's a wonderful oh, memory. Just, this is why it's so lovely that, that we have like these city farms for children 100%. and and the residential courses that people have as well. So so school children can come, and I mean I know we've got we've got quite a few in Gloucestershire, haven't we? Mm. Um, where people uh, children can come and stay for a whole week, and yeah. Just just to have a go at what it's like to farm and some some people might never have seen a chicken before never oh, mind yeah. got, picked up one of its warm eggs I, i'm going to give a little plug here for the young farmers actually because my son harry who's 12 has been waiting to join young farmers but i said wait you know you're a little bit young so he's 12 he joined his first young farmers meeting is tomorrow okay and they're going temping bowling with the young farmers now if, if there's anyone out there with children between sort of probably about 12 and up to maybe I think they're like twenty six or might be slightly older, who who has an interest in farming or you know just wants to know a little bit more about it, but also wants a bit of a laugh because young farmers do like a laugh. Give young farmers a go. Look on the internet and find out where your local young farmers club is because it's a fantastic organisation. Gives kids an outlet to go out and do things outside in the countryside. I had a fantastic time in my time in it. And Harry's going to relive my life now going into Young Farmers. I'm quite jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably a little bit worried about some of those aspects oh, as well. Wow. Um, kind of Chelton Town Hall, I can remember half, many a happy evening there. We won't go there, it used to get a bit messy. <laughs> I bet it did. <laughs> um, and your eldest, Dan, who mm. is 15, so you were telling me that, you know, Richard back in 1984... Mm was on the farm as a 16-year-old. Yeah. And can you imagine that now? That could be your lad in a year's he's, time. My oldest one's not so keen on the farm, but he's, I don't know what he, I don't think he really knows what he wants to do, but he's re, he's really good with the cows. I tell you what, Jack, my son, is incredible, right? He's picked up this knack. He can identify all the cows from just sight. So he can tell me what number they are from the other side of the field. And I can't do that, right? So if, I, if, if we were in a field, imagine we're in a field, okay, yeah. and... 100 yards away, there's 20 cows, okay? And they all look the same all, to me. You know, and I, I knew the bad ones, the ones that might kick you, or the ones that know how to let themselves out of the milk and parlour or something. I mean, I remember those. But I'm not very good on remembering. He he could stand there with me. I, I do not exaggerate. He could tell me the numbers of each of the cows there. Have you got a video of that? I haven't. No, that's a good idea. I should do that. We'd love to see he's that. He's really... And the thing is, he's got a really good manner with them. The thing about working with cattle and stuff, you need to be quite gentle with them. Dairy cows are nice because they're quite a friendly... You know, if you handle them every day, usually they are quite placid. Yeah. Jack's really good with them. And we had a calf that was... Uh, a heifer that was calving recently, and he was really keen to go and keep an eye on it and make sure it was okay. You know, so that's, my, that's Jack's idea. You know, like, and again, I said... I don't mind what he does, but he'll always have that memory and he'll always have maybe that skill. Of, yeah. I'm not sure where he transfer the skill of remembering the number of cows is, but onto um, something else, you never know. Maybe you should take him to a casino and memorize, yeah. memorize, <laughs> memorize the cards. Memorize the roulette wheel. Yes! Or whatever, the cards, the card thing. Brilliant. Right, let's get into the tune. So then, we have spent the last, well, best part of an hour with Richard Cornock, dairy farmer from Wotton, otherwise known as the Funky Farmer. He's got a huge following now with 157 thousand subscribers 
and uh, walking through Ireland, policemen recognise him. <laughs> <laughs> the Garda. I got recognised by a Garda as I was walking through the road. Well, and that's really funny. Well, so it's Richard, isn't it? And it's like, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, as long as you're recognised for the right well, reason. Well, that's right, yeah. Because you know, yeah, 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 he looks good. you every week. No. Um, so you've got, I mean, we're entering into, it feels funny saying we're entering into winter because we're only just in autumn, aren't we? Mm. But we're entering into winter, which can be a, a tricky time for you guys, can't it? Especially oh, it, being out there in the cold. Do you know what, Kate? This is this is my where I'm starting to think. Oh, here comes the work. And every farmer will think like this. Every livestock farmer, because you know you can sort of take your foot off the accelerator when the cattle are out. You know they're grazing. You haven't got to worry about feeding them and cleaning them. Yeah. And, and also you feel better because the weather's good. You know we all know what it's like in the summer. You feel cheerful. You look out the window. It's a grey day. It's not so good. But I'm heading into the time when. I know when I'm lying in bed, I can hear the rain on the window, and yeah. I'm thinking I've got to be out in that by sort of half five to go and start the milking, and then it's mud and muck uh, right through till probably April. So I've got that coming, and I I kind of try not to think too much about it, but you know. Do you think also you you in the summer months you almost forget about you the do. pain that's coming yes. ahead? And because I we spoke last December when it was really cold. Do you remember we had a very mm. cold December, and we were talking about um, breaking the ice on the water troughs. Mm. And you were also mm. talking about you got a hammer yeah. and you were dinging the cow pats <laughs> because the cow pats had frozen. They were you, solid, weren't they? You could hit a cow pat with a hammer, and it, <laughs> and it was like bash the bash the pat, as it were. But at the end of the year, also mm. um, often lots of us like to think about the year ahead yeah. and 2024 and you've got a calendar coming I out have, haven't you? i've got the funky farmer calendar i only started doing it a couple of years ago actually i thought i'd give it a go um because i used to take a lot of photographs i did um a book called a year on a dairy farm that was 2010 i did that and i used to do a lot of photography only amateur really amateur i'm not going to be saying i'm any good but really amateur but i love doing the pictures but then that all stopped really with doing video for youtube because you you know if you're out in the field you can't really take pictures very easily but then things have moved on a lot now with a camera phone it suddenly becomes a little bit better so uh it was only two years ago actually i thought you know what i could probably do a, a calendar it's quite nice because people people are always wanting to sort of have a little souvenir if you like of the funky farmer yeah. so um i did a calendar this two years ago I did one last year and i've got one coming out I've, it's at the printers as we speak how can people get hold of it if they want one it will be on the, my uh, richard cornock website so richardcornock.co.uk that will be available early october thank you for coming on the program today it's been an absolute pleasure i to love seeing you back. i do and i'm all your listeners on behalf of all your listeners thank you thank you for what you've done for the last eight years on this show stop it now right <laughs> there we go Done, job done. I hope you enjoyed listening to a little bit of that. Uh, well, I was talking to Kate a lot off camera actually. Um, and, well, sorry, not off camera, off radio actually, because she's like me, you know, she's got a job to do, but she's trying to broadcast at the same time and chat. So it's a bit like me, I'm trying to work and video and stuff. So she did say, oh, you know, she's doing some sort of West Country, she's going to be a producer for uh, local radio now rather than presenter because uh, she's managed to get a job doing that and there might be some opportunities to for me to do something with local radio in the west so you never know i might be back on something who knows anyway that was it that's probably my last visit for radio gloucestershire for a while which is a shame but anyway i'm off home now as someone keeps saying crack on well today has been my last show with you here on bbc radio gloucestershire for now from next week, there'll be a new show covering everything that's happening in the West, presented by Andy Bennett between 10 and 2. I can barely even begin to describe how much this radio station, this county and all the many contributors I've met over the years have influenced my life, but I'll try. I moved here for a job at Radio Gloucestershire 15 years ago and instantly fell in love with the place. It's such a wide, varied county, isn't it? From the tops of the Cotswolds to the Stroud Valleys, Severn Vale and the Forest of Dean, with all its unique towns and villages in between. My partner followed me here too, and we settled. We got married. I had my first son at GRH, my second at home in the Forest of Dean, and my daughter a couple of years later. 
I must have spent hundreds of hours walking and cycling through the forest, soaking up its enchanting and alluring vibes. I love the place. And I feel most at home strolling along an old tram line surrounded by huge trees with deer, boar and squirrels crossing my path. During the last eight years, I've been with you here on a Sunday morning and we've aimed to bring you stories of Gloucestershire's countryside, wildlife and in more recent times, lots of gardening. And I don't know about you, but I've learned so much from all our brilliant contributors, from experts in flora and fauna and the local farmers who grow our food. I hope you have enjoyed it too. And thank you to all my fabulous colleagues that have helped me bring you these programmes. For me, well, I'll be working at BBC Radio Gloucestershire behind the scenes. So I'm still here and you can always get in touch with me on email. And if you call in on a weekend morning, it might just be me picking up the phone. So I'll chat to you then. <laughs>